UGA has recently completed their cotton production meetings across the state. We caught up with one group in Mitchell County, got an inside look at this year's preparations for their Georgia cotton producers. Mitchell County is one of the top three cotton producing counties in the state, according to the Georgia Cotton Commission website. Growers in the county were responsible for over 118,000 bales in 2014. Many of those producers were at the UGA cotton production meeting to get the latest on planting, potential problems, and the concerns of recent cotton prices. Every year it's something else, something new that, we're, that will come up, some new question, some new issue that we have to address. And the UGA cotton team does a great job doing that. And this is a, a wonderful opportunity for, for the people in Mitchell County and really all counties in uh, cotton producing areas in Georgia to really to get an update and find out what's going on for the new year. Shirley is Ag and Natural Resources agent and spends a lot of time talking to cotton and peanut producers about their crops and preparing the fields for planting. So really across the board, um, we, re we really want the, uh, to get those plants out of the ground, growing as quickly as possible, uniform stand. So yes, yeah, certainly rain in the past few years has been, has been an issue for the cotton growers and the peanut growers, sure. Dr. Jared Whitaker, Extension Cotton Agronomist, told us that this year, like last growing season, will have its challenges. You know, Georgia's always variable. There's always wet spots and dry spots and wet, wet areas and dry areas. We're just getting started. A lot of guys are working in the field, um, getting things started. But, you know, in Georgia, we have, it doesn't take long for us to dry out and get things started. You know, we had, a, we had a pretty wet fall, and you can see a lot of guys honestly left cotton in the corners of fields, and we had some that were just been too wet to get to. But starting to see more and more guys starting to get started and you know with our equipment and our ability to make things happen we won't be too late we will be able to catch up and, and, and get things going pretty fast they're sticking to the rotations they're they're just seeing where where they can save save money whether it's uh, inputs or maybe they aren't planting as much acres and I'm sure every situation every farming situation is going to be a little bit different but this year for sure um, they'll definitely need to make sure that they sit down and pencil out everything um, economic-wise to make sure that they're going to be uh, where they need to be this year, or it's best case scenario as possible, I suppose. After nearly 50 production sessions in the last two months, Whitaker thinks weather has been the dominant topic that he's had to discuss. We had, I guess you'd say, historical rainfall events as far as in the cotton harvest window. It happened, started late for us, and you know, from a historical standpoint, fiber quality from a color standpoint is related a lot of times to how much rainfall we get. And so I track color and our fiber quality throughout the year and, and over time. And our color as far as fiber quality was as poor as it's been in at least 15 to 20 years. So to me, that gives you a good indication of how wet a fall we had and ultimately why we left cotton in the field. 